Hey there, I'm Consuelo Lockhart, and today we're gonna to be looking at a MIG project. So this planter box, as you can see, I have my parts that were plasma cut. So I created a file on Illustrator, sent it over to the plasma cutter, and then they cut all the parts and pieces out. So you can see I have all the sides, the bottom, um, and we're gonna assemble it like this. I have my tri-square and I have some magnets to help me keep all the pieces in place. Uh, so uh, we're gonna hop into the project right now. So before we get started with the project, there are a couple things that I wanted to start off uh, focusing on. So one, it's always a good habit to get into cleaning your gun and always just inspecting it first because if you have a buildup of spatter all over your nozzle, uh, then that will impact your weld and contaminate it. And then you're gonna have to grind that weld off and then uh, re-weld over it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the nozzle off and so I'm gonna take my welpers and I'm gonna actually put them through just a couple uh, passes back and forth, made sure I got all that gunk off of there. Before I put it back on, I'm gonna inspect the welding tip just to make sure that there's no spatter that is gonna be touching the wire. And usually you can tell if there's some spatter buildup around the hole is you'll see that your wire keeps jumping and it doesn't feel like it's coming out nice and smooth. So now that that's clean, put my nozzle back on, pull the trigger. I'm gonna take my pliers and cut the access off. Now I'm good to go. I also have some nozzle gel here and so what's nice about the nozzle gel is that it will also prevent some of the spatter from building up. Um, and so uh, as I keep welding, I'll keep kind of dipping in there, not too much, just a little bit. And that will help spatter from getting on, on the piece as well. I'm gonna start with a T joint. So I'm going to tack the edge here, flip it around, tack the other edge, and then I'm gonna do a weld down the center of that joint. And the reason why I'm starting with a T-joint is to make sure that my settings are right, um, that, you know, I can find that nice, consistent movement and pace as I'm welding the parts and pieces together, get some practice in before I put the final piece together. So now I got my T-joint set up. I'm going to take my gun and I'm going to go down the center making sure I'm moving consistently, not too fast, not too slow. I don't want to favor one particular plate versus the other. So it's really important that I'm keeping right in that center. So the weld melts right into that joint, nice and evenly, nice and smooth. Okay. So I finished my drag, my T-joint. So you can see here that I stayed in the center and I didn't favor this plate or that plate. I was moving consistently. Take a look at the other side. So here, obviously I started off a little fast, so I didn't let that melt down and flatten out. Um, and then I was going through, sped up just a tiny bit, but this is practice and this is why we do this before we do it on the final piece but it was all consistent. There are a couple of things that, you know, I would like to mention before you hop in uh, and start putting together any project really. But with MIG specifically, um, you know, it's always good to make sure that you're adjusting your settings. Some machines might have an auto set, which is great because you can just adjust your settings based on the thickness of steel. So um, for every project that, you know, I, I do, I always make sure that I'm setting uh, everything to the steel thickness. So if it's a thin gauge material, obviously you want to turn some of that heat down. The thicker material, you'll have to adjust your settings to get more heat. So then you make sure you get good penetration. Obviously learning how to control the heat is important because if you go too hot, and you might think you're at a good setting for a low gauge steel, but you'll just burn a hole through, which then, you know, can get a little frustrating because I've seen other welders and I know I've done this myself, where if I burn a hole through the steel, you try to sit there, you try to tack and patch it, and you're only adding more heat to that hole 
So it's always good to just kind of take a step back, let that cool off. Um, especially if you ran a long joint like this, like if I burned a hole through, I'd probably just wait because you can't, you can't cool it down the more and more heat you're adding to it. So it's always important to just kind of remember that when you're putting things together. I also wanted to practice on this T-joint just because on the project itself, I do have to make sure that my joints are perfectly at a 90 degree angle. So they're all square um, and making sure that, you know, I, I get into a comfortable position and pace. So I'm not favoring any of the other sides on my piece and making sure that my tacks are exactly where they need to be um, and not just jumping in and starting to weld without a tack weld. Um, so just kind of trying to keep all that stuff in mind. So here's the piece. So before I start uh, jumping in and getting everything assembled, Wanted to take a look at this project for, for the way that this was assembled. You now we use the tri-square, which if you've never used a tri-square before, it's great to put in joints. So you can see if you have any gaps um, or if anything's crooked. So it's always good to just kind of go over all the joints with your tri-square. All right, so I have all my pieces pulled out. Um, some good habits to get into is always inspecting your parts and pieces. So even though this looks like a perfect square, you can always use your tri-square just to make sure everything is actually square. And so I don't see any gaps on this side. And if something is crooked, you know, you can either take a plasma cutter, cut, maybe trim it off. Sometimes if it's uh, small enough, you might be able to just uh, use a hand grinder, or maybe it's not even that big of a um, difference and you'll probably be okay. And you could always work on having maybe an even space all the way around it to kind of offset maybe one side being a little bit wider than the other. Um, and so what I'm planning on doing is I am planning on, turn it this way so you can see, in the bottom, trying to align the edge of this plate to the bottom part of this back piece. Or if you're worried about it getting crooked or anything, or maybe you're like, well, I don't know if maybe this opening is the same distance from the bottom here it is down here. You can always take your tri-square and even just check. So that's, that's fine, but you know, sometimes I don't even uh, mind marking just along the edge just so I know that I'm not crooked in any way. So now that I have those guidelines right there, grab my magnets, line the bottom part of this. So then I can take my tri square. Carefully see, oh yep, that looks nice and square. Bring my magnet. Just like to slide it down. Make sure the magnet is flat. You can't always rely on a magnet to pull everything together at a 90. There's usually like, obviously I slid it down. So there's a good chance at the bottom probably slid out, but you know, that actually is square. And I can add my other one. Double check again. Looks good. So now my next step would be to tack this panel to this face, and then I'll start adding the other pieces. So I will not start welding any, any of this together until I have everything assembled, everything tacked. I double check to make sure everything is square, nothing's crooked. Um, and that is always super important because if it's crooked and you just start welding part of it, you're gonna have to cut it apart, grind the weld off, and it's a whole big production.
So I got done tacking this up. So um, what I when I tacked it, I made sure that I was in the center of those two plates. So I didn't want to favor that side or this side. Um, and, you know, I really want to make sure that the tack was actually, you know, uh, attaching those together. So I did one on the side, one in the center, one on the other side. And then I actually did uh, one on this side and one on that side. And the reason why I did uh, all those tacks was because I didn't want this to shift around. And you have to remember that even though these are tacked together, that is not strong enough to keep it all together once we get other weight in it. And um, we don't want the plate to get shifted with the more heat when I actually go back through and I do some of my stringer beads. So uh, tacks are super important. Um, and you know, I, I don't think it would have ended well if I only tacked here and here and then tried to weld on this side, there's a good chance that this plate would have got, gotten pulled that way. Or if I was welding on this side, it would have gotten pulled that way. So this will keep it from shifting. Okay. So now we're ready to add our second piece. So I'm going to actually flip this on its side. So even though, um, you know, I haven't used the square yet, now that I got the magnets in place, all I can do is just start hitting some of the plates uh, better in line if they're not square. So that is square there. Looks nice, no big gaps. I'm ready to tack it again. So I'm going to start from the top, go in the center, and then down on the bottom. So now with this, I'll carefully shift it around so you get the bottom side. And what's nice is that it, it is tacked, so if something does it doesn't maybe look right, I can always break it off. That's the beauty of a tackle. Perfect. So I can pull the magnets down carefully. So now, this part, I can actually stand this up. And I could do basically the same thing where I take the other side, making sure that it's right side up. Just gonna put this right here. Squaring it up. So that looks nice. So I can carefully put the magnet in place. And so for this, the side, I just want to make sure that both corners, the inside edges are coming together. So there will be kind of a nice gap that I could fill in with the weld, or I could always round it over, smooth it out. I'll flip it around in a second if I get the magnets in place. And now that I have all four of my magnets, Try to carefully shift this around. You can see that they're in place and that everything is same height. So now that I have everything in place, I can actually go and start tacking the inside. And so I know you couldn't see, but basically I jumped from this corner or this top to this top and just basically went from here down. And I did opposite sides because if you focus all of your tacks on one side, then there's a good chance that this side might start to pull either in or out, obviously pull out because this plate's on the way. Um, but that's one way to keep your pieces um, from shifting and then potentially leading to a crooked or uneven uh, piece. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the last and final piece to a planter box. I got that lined right there. 
I can start bringing in the magnets. So now that I have it all together, I'm gonna go back through, tack it once again, going from this corner to this one, uh, going opposite all the way down, just so I don't have too much heat on one side and possibly pulling the side panel one way or back and forth. So now that everything is tacked up, everything is square, everything is, uh, you know, nice and even, um, I'm going to go through and start stitch welding. So for those of you who might be new to either fabricating projects or even just welding in general. Uh, so stitch weld is basically like a shorter, uh, like a long stringer bead, but it's only just a little portion. And so I might start with on the inside, not the outside, but basically I'll do maybe a two inch stitch weld here or one inch, uh, one here. And I'll just kind of do it, try, try to be evenly when I'm going down, but I'll just go down all the way uh, on all the corners. Um, once again, also keeping in mind that I am not putting all my heat on one corner versus the other. So I might do the top stitch here. I'll bounce over here and then I'll go from opposite corners all the way down just so that the heat is being evenly distributed throughout the whole project. So then that way, you know, if there's a chance that attack breaks, then I don't have to worry about the pieces getting pulled one direction or another. Um, and also, you know, it might prevent some blow through, um, but this material is pretty, pretty thick, so it shouldn't be too bad. Um, but it's also just a good habit to get into anyways, because um, you never want to just start fabricating only on one side only, putting all that heat and pressure and all that. Um, and so, yeah, so that's my next step. I just got done with all my stitch welds. Um, there were a couple of things I wanted to maybe mention, um, you know, with plasma cut pieces, um, with the heat that's used when you have your pieces cut out, there's a chance that, you know, not all the plates were completely flat. You can see how there's a gap over here. So that didn't mean that I did something wrong. It's just the fact that this plate might have been slightly curved out, um, but everything else was square. Also, you can see how there's a slight gap right in this, uh, this joint as well. So when I was doing my stitch welds, uh, and thankfully I had uh, tack welds already there, um, I was able to build off uh, some of them. So towards the bottom, there was a larger gap. So I actually just did more of uh, a few different uh, tacks. And then I was able to weave when I could. Um, but making sure that, you know, you're, you're moving consistently, you're not pausing. Uh, along the edges because then I would have had blow through. I would have had to patch a hole um, and probably would have gotten frustrated. Um, and that also was nice that, you know, I'm bouncing from corner to corner, opposite corners. Uh, so, you know, once I did some uh, walls over here, I was able to go over there, we'll cut this pull down. So um, less likely to have a hole getting burned through, but everything is square. It looks nice. So my next step would be probably clean it up, paint it, and uh, you know get it out the door. And that was a uh, brief video in MIG welding, um, you know, explaining how to put together a fabrication piece just like this painter box. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful and uh, that the project you end up doing um, goes smoothly. So for more videos, go to well.com and I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.